All right, Shalom Akyam. All right, this is the fourth and final installment of the article for the reasons why our, our jails are full of black and poor people. But as you can see, it goes into the so-called blacks and Hispanics, all right, which goes into the southern and northern kingdom of Israel. All right, and I'm going to get the final 10 reasons why basically Jake is in jail in America. All right, and as you can see, so far it has nothing to do with us being inherently wicked or we just criminals by nature. All right, this is number 31. The DOJ, Department of Justice, reports another 3.9 million people are on probation. Probation is when a court puts a person under supervision instead of sending them to prison. Probation is also becoming a big, big business for private companies, which get governments to contract with them to collect outstanding debts and supervise people on probation. Human Rights Watch reports reported Human Rights Watch reported in 2014 that over a thousand courts assigned hundreds of thousands of people to be under the supervision of private companies who then require those on probation to pay the company for the supervision and collect fines, fees, and costs or else go to jail. For an example, one man in Georgia who was fined $200 for stealing a can of beer from a convenience store was ultimately jailed after the private probation company ran up over a thousand dollars in the in fees. So it's a gimmick, man. You know, it just it's, it's it's it goes back to a corporate head, man. Thirty-two, the Department of Justice reports an additional eight hundred fifty thousand people are on parole. Parole is when a person who has been in prison is released to serve the rest of their sentence under supervision. Thirty-three, the Department of Justice reported in twenty twelve that as many as one hundred million people have a criminal record, and over ninety four million of those records are online. So that's one-fourth of the American population, man. 34. Everyone can find out people have a record because it is so easy to access to arrest and court records. People who have been arrested and convicted face very serious problems getting a job, renting an apartment, public assistance, and education. 87% of employers conduct background checks. Employment losses for people with criminal records have been estimated at as much as $65 billion every year. 35. So you can't get a job if you got a criminal record, man. But who's to say your criminal record was actually implying that you um was actually implying that you did something wicked, man? It more than likely came up came from being poor. You couldn't pay off the fine, man. All right, or you did do something stupid, but guess what? Now you can't. Now you can't get a job, man. Thirty five. Race is a multiplier of disadvantage and un unemployment for people who get out of prison. A study by Professor DeVod De Pager demonstrated that employers who were unlikely to even check on the criminal history of white male applicants seriously discriminated against all black applicants, and even more so against black applicants with criminal records. Hey, man, it, it, don't get no, it don't get any clearer than this, man. You have employers that don't even consider hiring you, Jake, and they definitely won't hire your ass. If, by, if they check your criminal background record and see you have a record, but they're not even hiring Jake's they don't have a background record, but they don't even check the background record of so-called white Americans, man. White males. But we all credit equal. Everybody should treat each other. Man, get out of here, man. 36. Families are hurt by this. The Citizen Project reports 180,000 women are subject to lifetime bans from temporary assistance to needy families because of felony drug convictions. All right. 37. Convicted people cannot get jobs after they get out. More than 60% of formerly incarcerated people are unemployed one year after being released. Is it a surprise that within three years of release from prison, about two-thirds of the state prisoners are re-arrested? Nah, it's not a surprise. All right, because you're gonna you can't find any work and you got kids, how you gonna feed your kids, man? 38. The US spends $80 billion on this big business of corrections every year. As a retired criminal court judge, I know says. The high cost of this system would be worth it if the system was actually working and making us safer. But we are not safer. The system is not working. So the actual dollar we are spending are another indication of our failure. The cost of being number one in incarceration is four times higher than it was in 1982. Anyone feeling, feeling four times safer than they used to? <laughs> Sarcasm. 39. Putting more people in jail creates more poverty. The overall poverty rate in our country is undoubtedly higher because of the dramatic increase of incarceration over the past 35 years, with one research project 
estimating poverty would have decreased by 20% if we had not put all these extra people in prison. This makes sense given the fact that most all the people brought into the system are poor to begin with. It is not much harder for them to find a job because of the barriers to employment and good jobs erect by a criminal record to those who get out of prison. The increased number of one-parent families because of a parent being in jail and the bans on receiving food stamps and housing assistance. So there's a dramatic increase of one-parent household because Jake is locking all the, uh, the fathers up, man. Namely, the so-called black and Hispanic fathers, which is going to result in single-parent household, which is going to result in undisciplined kids that's going to get caught up in the BS out there, man. Your little girl might be a slut, and your, your son going to end up getting killed or go to jail, which goes back to Amos, I believe is um 7 and 18 or 19, because it goes out to say your wife should be a harlot in the city. But it goes on to say your son should fall by the sword, man. And your daughters should, should commit whoredom. You know why your daughter's going to commit whoredom and your son's going to fall by the sword? Because you're not in the household to protect them, man. And the guy at the house, why? Because Esau set up a whole structure, a whole structure to keep your ass locked up and away from your family, man. Now it all makes sense when you put it into perspective, man. All right. Number 40. Putting all these problems together, and you can see why the center of American progress rightly concludes today a criminal record serves as both a serve as both a direct cause and consequence of poverty. All right, so that's pretty much the, the gist of it, man. All right, Esau set up a system to further oppress the twelve tribes, and it's evident, man. Under the Huff Post, the article entitled. For the reasons why jails are full of black and poor people. Now let's get a scripture. All right, proving this is oppression. This is uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 38. How the Most High anointed Yahweh of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for the Most High was with him. Who was ruling at, at the time to oppress Jerusalem, man? It was the Romans, man. Who are the Romans? The so-called white people, man. The Edomites, man. Whom you call the so-called white people. All right? Now, let's look up that word oppressed, man. See what it says in the Greek. Oppress. All right. Strong's G, 2616. Katadunastuo. Katadunastuo. All right. It says to exercise harsh control over one, to use one power against one. Esau's prison system complex is exercising harsh control over the northern and southern kingdom, the so-called blacks and Hispanics in America, man. It's evident. All right. Let's further look up that word oppress. This is the online etymology dictionary, and this is the word oppress, and I'm going to get straight to the point. It says, press together, press down, figuratively, crush, put down. The white man always holding me down. You can safely say that now. All right. Subdue. Prosecute. What do you call it? A prosecutor. The state prosecutor. To prosecute relentlessly. Give them 10 years. Minimum sentence 15 years. You got 25 to life. That's to prosecute relentlessly, man. In late Latin, to rape. Hey, well, it's a hey, you literally get raped in jail, man. You're, it's like, well, I think they said 40,000 reported rapes a year. All right. But also, you're, you're figuratively getting raped, man, by the system. From a simulated form of ah, uh, which means against, and premier to, to press, to literally press against. So you're literally being pressed by Esau, known as the devil in the Bible, man, by his system. All right, his draconian laws, man, his dragon like laws. Going back to the blue letter Bible definition of oppressed. To exercise harsh control over one, to use one power against one. But let, let's go back to the word devil. Let's go to the word devil because it said they who were oppressed of the devil. All right. And I already have it set up. All right. It says Diablos. All right. See what that word, what's the definition for this word? Maybe it was a ghost that oppressed Jerusalem. Maybe it's a ghost that's oppressing us in America, man. It says, metaphor, applied to a man who by opposing the cause of God may be said to act the part of the devil or to side with him. All right, so that's evident, man. We are oppressed. We are crushed by a man that man is the elites, the Illuminati, Esau, 
which they had of Esau was the least of 13 bankers, man. Starting with Evelyn Rothschild, man. All right? That's the man. They call it the man, the devil. According to the Bible, it's evident, man. Showing you the Bible is not, it's not for so-called white people of all nations. It's talking about we getting crushed by the so-called white man. Hey, but with, hey, man, with that, I hope you brothers were edified. To the next lesson, Shalom, man. Kwam Yasha Allah.